Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Let's Be Real Sports. This is your dude, Joe Mambu. I am here talking today about the Chicago Bulls documentary, The Last Dance. As we all know, this documentary is actually really intriguing. From Jerry Krause just being insecure about himself, showing the upbringing of... Michael Jordan and how the shot that he hit made him turn him from Mike Jordan into Michael Jordan and even how um, Scottie Pippen's salary. I think that's the main thing that we got, especially from the second episode. My take was it was very nice because, you know, this whole pandemic thing that's going on, it kind of. It kind of sucks. So you need something to kind of entertain yourself for a bit. And this documentary came at the right time. It's a 10 part series. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love every minute of it. And the creator and the director said that the Bulls were very hesitant on letting cameras in for the 97, 98 season. But, um, as months passed on, the, the, you know, Phil Jackson and especially Michael Jordan was more receptive to the idea. So he said it's supposed to get really juicy, right? It's supposed to be getting really juicy. And I'm, I'm loving the fact from what I got from the first two episodes, if there's, if, if it's going to be anything above or beyond that, it's going to be very interesting to watch. So this episode, it, it did a lot. The, the first episode especially did a really good job of, just showing a young Jordan, right? Because, uh, you know, we all see the 63 points against the Celtics. And it was nice to see that that day or the day prior, uh, the exchange between him and Danny Ainge, where Danny, they went to go play golf and Danny Ainge basically got Jordan for some money. So it's good to see the motivation behind that, uh, single playoff game record that's still into effect even today right but basketball was very much needed it was very much needed because oh we all missed the nba season right i missed the nba season it was a great argument for lebron or Giannis antetokounmpo who would win mvp right the lakers were firing all cylinders the bucks were as well you still have Kawhi and the clippers but this whole pandemic this whole covid thing is very serious. Uh, so I understand that social distancing is a thing. And listen, you can't have all those fans in their arena. So NBA suspended uh, indefinitely, I presume. But this documentary is very nice. One of the things that I didn't care too for in the documentary was Michael Jordan's. So the thing about Michael Jordan, what he said about Scottie Pippen being selfish, that to me was kind of, kind of wrong, right? Because listen, before, like the Bulls, before the Bulls got Michael Jordan, they weren't anything. And even when Scottie came, they started winning more, but Jordan never won without Scottie. So you think Scottie's got drafted by Jerry Krause in 87. Right. You know, Pippen is rolling like he's really he's he's Jordan's right hand man, his sidekick and then and then doing some work. Right. So you think you would think at the end of the career, well, not end of the career, because Jordan did come back from retirement and Scotty went on to play for Houston in 97, 98, when this thing was uncertain about, you know, Scotty was like the 122nd player paid like he ranked 122nd out of NBA players being paid in the 97, 98 season. We forget that when Jordan had retired, Scottie Pippen was third in MVP votes. You know what I'm saying? Putting up some astronomical, astronomical numbers that year. But when Jordan said that Scottie was being selfish because he opted to have surgery at the beginning in the season instead of you know, doing it during the summer 
I, th- I think it was kind of wrong for Jordan t- to say that. And, and the reason why is because Michael Jordan was making a killing off the, off the floor, right? Michael Jordan was making a killing off the floor with his sneakers, right? Everybody wanted a pair of Air Jordans, right? Scotty Pippen has some, some sneakers as well. Scotty has some really good sneakers, but, um, Jordan was making a killing, right? So, you know, everybody will point to Jordan. Is Scotty making 20 million more in career earnings than Michael Jordan? I get that. And Michael Jordan was a basketball purist. Not saying Scotty was, but I think to the detriment of Jordan just wanted to win, right? And Scotty's like, yo, I'm winning too, but can we get paid? As we all know, the gross negligent salary of a seven year, $18 million deal was not it wasn't anything, right? It wasn't, it wasn't much, right? And Scotty came off an astronomical season when Jordan left, right? Basically, he was the star of the team. And jo- and Scotty was arguably the second best player on, uh, in the, not on the team. We knew he was the second best player on the team, but he was the, probably the second best player in the league. Maybe be behind Akeem Olajuwon or Charles Barkley or Carl Malone, but, Listen, if Jordan was one, Scotty Pippen was definitely the second best player in the league. So my thing was I didn't I, I didn't care too much because I get it. It's like it's a brotherhood, it's a camaraderie that you you, you kinda have to, to 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 be there for your brothers, right? You're supposed to be there and um be there for your guys, right? It's a whole team effort. And Jordan's suffered prior to Scotty being there in that 97, 98 season, he suffered after, uh, Scotty decided to take a little, uh, time for himself. Cause like he said in the documentary, he wasn't missing the summer. He was only making $2 million, right? Wasn't making no money. Jordan wasn't making that much money either. But in, in 97 and 98, he got paid $33 million. So if you equate that inflation in today's salary, uh, NBA salaries, you would know that that's equivalent to fifty million dollars. So Jordan would have been making fifty million dollars today if he was playing in today's league. Take a look at Scottie Pippen's contract over the years. wasn't making crazy money, you know. Neither was Jordan, but the Bulls compensated Jordan, right? And then he was making all of the endorsement deals with Nike, Gatorade, and all that. We go from 1990 to 91, 765,000, 92, 93, it jumps up to 3,000. I mean, 3 million. Then you have, he's basically making less than what he did his 92, 93 season. He's actually making a million dollar less. And then when he goes to Houston in 98, 99, makes that a 11 million. Him and Barkley's not getting along. Ship him to Portland. Portland's giving him 14, 13, 18, and 19 million. So Pippen got paid at the end of his career, right? Let's not make it seem like Pippen is broke, but he wasn't making more than Jordan. My thing also that I got from that documentary was I know they did a lot to paint Jerry Krause as the bad guy, right? As the villain. And you, if you got a 10 part documentary, you need some villains. You need some people who you're going to hate. So the documentary started off really well by introducing Jerry Krause just as the architect and its destroyer. Jerry Krause didn't draft Michael Jordan. That was actually Rod Thorne. Everything else, Jerry Krause kind of did, you know? Uh, 1987, he drafted Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant, which is really, he did really well for doing that. He got rid of Charles Oakley for Bill Cartwright, but, and, and you know, people, because Charles Oakley was like Jordan's guy. And when that trade happened, people was looking at Jerry Krause like, what's going on? You know, why would you trade your star player's closest teammate? But the thing was, he, he needed to do that to get Scotty and Horace Grant in the star lineup because they have done well beyond, they were playing well beyond their contract. So Jerry Krause has some notable things, you know, hiring Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, he hires Phil Jackson in the 1989-90 season. 
He has zero experience as a head coach in the NBA. So Jerry Krause was a part of hiring Phil Jackson. L- listen, Jordan complains about Jerry Krause, but Jerry Krause hired Phil Jackson. And we all know if Phil Jackson wasn't coaching, Michael Jordan wasn't playing. And he said that on numerous occasions. You also have, he drafted Tony Kukoc in the second round in 1990. This is all Jerry Krause doing. And then... You have him trading Stacey King for Luke Longley. You go ahead, you, you you get rid of Will Purdue and get him for Dennis Rodman, who was having a tumultuous year in San Antonio. You then turn around and uh listen. You then so Jerry Jerry Krauss was a huge uh huge importance to the Bulls organization. Let's not make it seem like he's all bad. Uh, I think he did a really good job, especially with the stuff that I've mentioned. We know Dennis Rodman was an integral part of that uh, three-piece. That second three-peat, I mean, sorry. We know Tony Kukoc was an integral part of the Bulls dynasty. He drafted arguably the second best player who was playing in the league with Jordan and Horace Grant, who... Horace Grant and Shaq ended up taking out Jordan when he came back from retirement. So listen, Jerry Krause knows what he's doing. He's not the best guy, but he's he's a lot of reason for the Bulls' success. The players do have to go and win the championship, uh, which is understandable, but the organization has the tools in which to make the pieces to, to, to acquire these players. And Jerry Krause did a hell of a job doing that with the exception of drafting Michael Jordan, which was Rod Thorne. So guys, I want to, this is a kind of a short episode. A lot of stuff been going on with the pandemic. We're doing some social distancing. I'm doing episodes from home. I want to thank you guys for listening and tuning into another episode. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to hit us up on LBRS talk at gmail.com. You should also go to Let's Be Real Sportscast on YouTube as well. Check out our Twitter, Let's Be Real Sportscast. Make sure to check out the LBRS Sports Blog page on Facebook. Big Sharon puts up some really good content, and I hope to have him for the next episode. Until then, part two of the documentary or part three, however you count the episodes tonight. So uh, make sure you check it out, and I'll have more stuff next week detailing uh, about what's going on, and it should be an interesting one. Hopefully, there's more talk about Dennis Rodman. All right, people, have a good day. Peace. This has been a Gifted Sounds podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review. For more podcasts, please visit giftedsounds.com.